This podcast deals with disturbing subject matter. Listener discretion and headphones are advised. It's time to open the door to your mind. Sit back and listen to true horror. But be careful of what you allow in. Because it's time to go through the fog. I'm Dark Hero, and this story is called Death to the Narrator, Part 1. I've spent the last few years listening to horror podcasts almost nonstop. I started out listening to true crime podcasts, then I moved on to people recounting terrifying encounters, and eventually to creepy lore discussing urban legends and dark history. Among all the different types of content available, horror story narration stood out to me. I spent sleepless nights with my headphones on listening to people tell creepy stories posted online. I am immediately transported into a really good story, brought to life by a dulcet tone narrator. I'm able to watch the horror unfold, playing the scenes in my head and painting the world with the details as they describe them. I was addicted. When I decided to create my own narration podcast, my addiction turned into a passion. I bought a microphone, downloaded an audio recording program, watched countless videos, and read various how-to guides. Despite all my research and the thousands of dollars I spent on equipment, I had no idea what I was doing when I hopped on my computer and hit the record button. I began by practicing on stories from other channels that I enjoyed, and as I became more comfortable with my voice, I went online and approached authors to use their stories. I published my first episode, and to my surprise, I received positive feedback from listeners a few days later. As time went on, my podcast slowly grew. My narrations got better, I was editing faster, and my love for horror reached new heights. October began to creep closer, and Halloween was on its way. I decided I wanted to do something big for the holiday, so I scoured the internet for a story. It couldn't be just any story, it needed to be something fresh and new. I clicked on page after page of subreddits, and there were some amazing stories out there, but nothing was calling to me. I even did a few posts asking for submissions, and again, the stories were great, but not what I was looking for. I was, until I got a message from a user by the name of XCF18390 with a link to a story that they'd posted. They looked like a new user. It was the only thing they'd posted, but I loved it. It was a fun story involving a group of teens, a haunted campground, and a mysterious monster, and an amazing twist. I really enjoyed the story, and it seemed pretty popular. I replied to XCF18390 going through the usual questions, like how they wanted to be credited, but they didn't answer. I wanted to wait a bit until I got their answer, but Halloween was only a couple weeks away and the clock was ticking. They never replied back to me, so I just copied a link to the Reddit page. I really wanted to get the episode done, so I decided on recording after work. That night. When I got to my apartment, I went into my recording room, which was just the extra bedroom I had with my computer to start printing out the story. I sat at my gaming chair, listened to the printer whirring while I figured out how to read it. I pulled the small stack of papers out of the tray, skimming through the pages to make sure everything looked okay. After checking everything, I plugged my headphones in and set them on my head. I took a deep breath to prepare myself and... Just before clicking on the recording software icon, I heard someone whisper. I took off my headphones and I turned around. The door was closed, and of course, since I lived alone, I was the only one in the room. I sat there for a few seconds, just staring at the door, till I turned back to my computer and put my headphones on. I opened the software, and I could hear that whisper again. It was so faint, I couldn't hear any discernible words, but I could definitely hear something. I thought I was picking up some kind of audio, so I checked my mic, but no. The mic wasn't even plugged in yet. 
I pressed my hands on the ear pads of my microphone, trying my hardest to listen to that whispering. I held my breath, zeroing in on that noise until... A loud ping from a notification came from my computer, and it made me jump. It was just a message from Discord from one of my friends. And I set my head back to let out a relieved laugh. A wave of embarrassment hit me. I couldn't believe I let my mind play tricks on me. Especially after being used to reading so many horror stories. Come on, get your shit together, I told myself. I shook off that anxious feeling I had and finally got to work. I started to record a few sentences. Starting over after a few stutters here and a couple of pronunciation errors there. Things were going pretty well after I got done with a few paragraphs. I was narrating the story, remembering the imagery I had when I first read it. I was coming up to a part where a new character was being introduced when I read out, Then, as he thought he was finally comfortable, he felt that he was no longer alone. He could hear the creaking of the floorboards behind him, but he was too afraid to turn around. I felt confused. I've read the story a few times while I was at work, and this line was definitely not in it. I clicked stop on the recording, and that's when I heard it. The sound of creaking coming from behind me. The steps seemed slow and deliberate, as if someone was tiptoeing towards me. I tried to move my chair around, but it wouldn't budge. I tried to force my head to turn, but I couldn't move it at all. I stared helplessly at my computer screen as I saw my heavy breaths being recorded through the microphone. The creaking steps were inching closer to me, and I could hear that whispering going through my headphones again. My eyes turned towards the paper in my hand, and I could see the next line. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. A raspy voice emerged from the whispers, and it repeated the words as I read them in my mind. For a brief moment, I felt that I was able to move again. I turned my head to see what was behind me, twisting the base of my chair. It groaned as I looked to see an empty space leading towards the closed door. I removed the headphones from my ears and sat still to collect myself. I reread the story's pages and everything seemed normal till I read a new line within one of the paragraphs. The lights in the room began to flicker off before I could finish what I was reading. My computer monitor turned on, casting a bright light behind me, creating a silhouette in front of my eyes. I began to hear labored breathing coming from my headphones, followed by a familiar voice. M my voice. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I was frozen in terror as I stared at the headphones on my lap, and my heart almost stopped when I suddenly heard my own blood-curdling scream erupt from them. When I pushed myself out of my seat, the lights came back on. What? What the hell is going on? I muttered to myself. Why is this happening to me? I threw the papers to the ground. My hands were trembling, and I was completely drenched in sweat. I was terrified because I couldn't make sense of what was happening to me. My phone began to buzz in my pocket, and I took it out to check the notification. It was a new message, or messages, from XCF18390. My phone kept buzzing until I clicked on one of the notifications. It was a series of messages that all said, Die, 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 die. I was dizzy, and the buzzing from my phone had turned into a ringing in my ears. It became more intense and louder, and I could taste blood as something warm ran down my nose and past my lips. My knees buckled and my body began to fall because I no longer had the strength to keep myself upright. A loud thud was the last thing I remember hearing. The ringing was gone, but everything began to fade. My entire body went numb. And I... Through the Fog is recorded and edited by Hop. Intro and outro by Katie Kemp. For more stories, go to www.throughthefog.org. We'll be back in two weeks, so keep your eyes on the floor.